Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I want to wrap up um, ingress and ingress controller. And so far, we've seen how to define our ingress control using a prefix, essentially a pattern, a URL pattern that we use to route to our different services. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a host name or a domain name so that you can get to your controller and to your service. And what it means is that with this, you can still use prefix. It's just that now you have um, something that looks more, what must I say, a specific domain name for each application. So if you imagine, like, let's say, let's say Google. So Google's domain, google.com, on that domain name, they have a host name, right? So they have like maths.google.com, finance.google.com, and other things like that, right? Um, so play, I believe, play.google.com also. So you can imagine that each one of these are different application and depending on which host name or domain name you go to, um, fully qualified domain name, you're going to get to a different service. And so that's what we're going to do. So first thing we're going to do is start off by um, creating our cluster, Kubernetes cluster correctly. I'm going to switch back now to using K3D. Um, I show you how we res that issue was that we had. I show you to resolve that, and I'm not worried about it. Uh, so I'm going to switch back here to using K3D. So I'm going to say K3D um, cluster create. And this time when I create a cluster, I want to bind port 80 on my host to port 80 of the load bands up. Before I was doing like port 80, 81, something like that. But now I'm going to do port 80 and you're going to see why. So just trust me and just go with that. So while cluster is being created, which is fine. Um, you've seen this before. So we'll speed past that because there's nothing interesting happening here. And today we're not going to be writing any code. We're going to reuse the existing um, Docker images that we created before. And so I'm just going to make sure that we import that in our cluster because, of course, we need to use it. So that's going to be K3D import image sorry import and we want to import that image that we created where we can pass a um, version um, environmental variable and we're going to use that because what we're going to do is set different value for that environmental variable so we can see that all we have so we create two different services with different values for that environmental variable and then we can see that all we are switching between them and so in terms of the directory we're going to be working from we, our last video was um, part four in Ingress, so this is going to be part five. So we're just going to copy recursively part four Ingress, and we're going to make that part five Ingress. And nothing to it, and we'll change to that directory and start up our VS Code. Now, once VS Code is up, um, like I said, we're not going to be writing any code, so, um, but let's zoom in a little bit here so you can see it, make sure you can see things. And so I'm going to get rid of the Docker file and all this good stuff here. And so I still want this stuff in the KTS directory. And specifically, like I said, I want to be able to create two services still because I want to show that we can um, route to the different services. So uh, I still need two deployments, of course, and then I'll create two services well. But um, I want to simplify the things we had. So let's just start with um, deployment two here. And if you scroll down, remember that oh, in this deployment, we had two containers. We had our application and we had Nginx. So we'll just get rid of Nginx. We don't need that. And we'll keep our application. If you notice, it's, it's very simple, right? It's just one replica of this service. We're going to call a service two. And so what I'm going to do is copy all of this. Bam. Um, actually, I don't even need to copy all of it. I just really need the image here. And I'm going to go to deployment one and I'm going to say, use this image. So that's it. I don't need anything else. Okay. Now, oh, there's one other thing. Here in our deployment, we're using an environmental variable. Um, so, you know what? Um, let's do this. Let me shift this over a little bit with that container. So I'm going to also copy the environmental variable configuration. And so put that below our image here. So YAML and it's confusing things. Okay, so this is fine. 
um, except for this first service, I'm going to change this value. So this is the image. We still want this image with this version, remember? But the value here, I'm going to give it is service one. So version one, okay? And that's it. That's the only thing the different between them is essentially this value and then the name, of course, for the different um, deployment and so on. Now, in terms of the service, we don't need to change the service, right? Except for service two, I don't have the Nginx um, container running, so I can take that out. But other than that, I can leave it and say, go to port 8080 and the same here, because each port or each service gets its own IP address. It's okay if they use, reuse the same port number, Not, no problem there. I can go start things up. Let's just go see what happens so far. I think it should be working fine, but let's just confirm before we go too far. And so I'll just do a watch here. I'm going to look for pods deployment service and ingress controller. And then let me open up another command line here. Um, what I want to do is apply and apply everything in that directory. And we shouldn't have any problem creating our um, pods and so on. And you can see it's running because uh, we imported that image. So everything is all good. All right. So that's fine. I just want to make sure that it's sort of up and running. So I'm going to stop this cleanup. And what I'll do is say kubectl logs minus follow. And I want to follow a service one con, um, pod. And then I'm going to do the same thing. kubectl logs minus f follow a service two. If you remember that our application doesn't really write out anything until we actually send like a request to it. And so we're not going to see anything right now. Well, I said that we want to configure Ingress controller to route traffic to our services, not by the path here, but rather by um, the host name. And so the way that's done is if you hover over this rules here, you see rules is a list of host rules used to configure Ingress. If unspecified or no rule matches, all traffic is sent to the default backend. Well, we didn't talk about default backend, not a big deal. But the Ingress rule, so one of the rule, is that it contains a host value, and it tells you, you know, some things about what a host value. And then besides host, it's going to have um, HTTP object, and that's what we've been using. So each rule, as you can see, this dash means an element in this array calls rules, and we could have used host here, but we decided to just not use the host and just use the HTTP object, but we can still put host there, um, host, and we'll give the host name. So we'll call our thing service one, that local host, that local. And of course, remember each rule, if you hover over this rules, you'll see that it tells you each ingress rule, you know, has all these properties. So this is just one rule here. Okay. Now, this goes to our first, this is going to be for our first service. And what we're going to say, it's match on the path forward slash. We don't need to use anything else. Like whatever comes after this, we're going to have that go directly to our service. And similarly here, uh, let's think of this part at the bottom here for Nginx. And notice we had one ingress rule with several paths. But now we want to make sure that oh, we wrote to a, we use a different host name. So what I should do is use a different host name, different host name, which means it has its own HTTPS and paths. So um, let's copy this essentially. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy it down here. And all this is saying now is that we have two entries in our rules, two ingress rule rules. One of them is service one with the host name and the other is service two, whereas before we had one ingress rule and that's it. That's all we really need to do. Um, we actually don't need any of this because we're now wearing with the ingress, um, the redirection sort of thing. This wouldn't work in K3D as we know before. That's why it sort of ignored it and it still ran. And so if I apply again, it should update our ingress and it did without any error. And that's fine. So now the question is, how do we make sure we send a request to each one of these? I like using HTTP IE, which shorthand is HTTP. 
I use minus V for verbal sort of, and that's good for debugging. And I'm going to say that I want to send a command to the local host and it's port 80. And um, if I do this and I just enter, what you're going to see is that um, there's my command there, and this is called the request header. I, I don't have a request body, so there's nothing there. And then this is the response header, and the response body is just this text saying that, oh, you know, page not found. And you can see that here. It says the content type or the type of this content is text plain, and this is certainly text plain. All right. Now, when I look at the request header, I could see something called host. And it's saying localhost colon 8080. What is being sent in that request? And the load balancer for K3D or whatever load balancer you're using Kubernetes gets it, looks at that value, and that's how it knows how to route to the service. So in other words, what I really want to be able to do is to say something like this. I want to be able to say service one, or let's say service two, that localhost that local. Okay, that's what I want to say too. Well, since I'm using HTTP, I my HTTP IE knows that that's what I want to use, so I don't have to put port 80. I can just enter this, and there we go. And so you can see now it changed the host value to service to that local host, that local. And that got to our um, thing, but or did it? We don't know. It seems to have spent a lot of time trying to think about it, and then it returned. So I certainly didn't get the error message I got before. So something is different. What about if I use service one instead? And we can still see from the top, nothing is hidden in these service, services that we have. So if I do this, ah, that one worked. It hit that service. And we can see that it worked because we get the res um, our version value here is service one. So why did that one work? Well, the reason that one worked is because I have a host name configure, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, what I can do, however, is I can say that for service two, I have that value. And I can say set it locally to port 8080, but I want the host value, that header value, to be set to service two. And so if I do this, notice how it it did go to that service. That's because it was able to send to the local host port 8080, but the request in the header, it had service two. So why did the first one work and the second one not work? Well, the reason for that is because of something that I have in my Etsy host file. Now, for people who are on Mac and Linux, this is the file you need to edit. Um, but for people on Windows, this is going to be a little bit different. You have to do a search on your system for where your OS file is. I used to know when I used to use Windows, it's somewhere in System32 or something like that. I don't remember, but for Windows, you have to figure it out. But here you go. Um, you know, I put a comment here says for testing. But this is the IP address for my local system. It's called a loopback address. And notice how I have service one that local host that local. And that's why it was able to work just now. And I can, for example, I can add to this IP address and say, Service to that local host that local is also another name for this um, that binds to this or resolves to this IP address. So essentially, when you send a request and you send it to a host name, your system comes to this host file if it's not an IP address and say, "Oh, do I know how to resolve that host name to IP address?" And if there's one in here, it resolves it. Is there isn't one here, it look, there's a rules that it goes through. It's not part of what we're talking about, but just know there's an order and then eventually it hits your, your DNS resolver. But the first place it looks generally is your host file. So do we just need to put that in there? And so this resolve back to my local IP. So literally, if I do HTTP minus V 127.0.0.1, you know, one colon port 80. That's remember, that's what we open up on our local machine. And then slot forward slash, let's say, boots, for example. And I run that. Of course, it doesn't find the page because look at the host that it's using. But if I want, I can still send this here, but then say it, oh, oh I want the host value to be server to that local host, that local. 
I know it will write what that serve that host value is. And once it's set the host value, notice the request goes to our load balancer that's listening on port 8080 because that's where I sent it. Here we go, port 8080. And so it responds, this guy responds. Now, since I have these set up now, like the domain name or the host name, I can just simply say HTTP minus V, and I can say server one that local host that local, and then colon, let's say, you know, it's not colon, forward slash, because port 80 is default, boots, and then this works. You can see here, if I clean up, and then clean up again and resend this request, you can see up here, it says forward slash boots, request for forward slash boots on API server version one, and I can send users, and I can send that to server two. And there you go. You can see slash users on API version server two. Right. Let me just clean up and send that again, just so we all see in that. And there you go. It requested it. Okay, so that is working. And the only way to, well, there are two ways to get it working. You can modify your Etsy host file, but if you don't want to modify your Etsy host file, just set the header. Now, if you're not using HTTPIE, and you're using curl instead, you can still do curl minus V. And if you do localhost colon 8080, for example, you do it like this, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see the request header, and you're going to see the response header with you know the response body. And notice there is that host value. So you want to reset the, um, set the host value. So the way you do this in with curl is you minus capital H for header, and you say host colon, I should enclose this in single quotes, so host colon srv1 dot local host dot local and bam. And notice how this also works. And this is if you're, let's say, on a system where you do not have access because you, in order to change the Etsy host file, you have to have admin permission. If I clean up again, um, notice that's only required, it's rewriting the, the header is only required if I cannot modify my Etsy host file. But if I can modify my Etsy host file, then I don't need to specifically overwrite the header because when I make the request to this host, you know, it uses the correct host file. Um, sorry, I need to take a colon host there and let's clean up and let's run it again. And as you can see, the request slash authors were sent to my application. All right, that's it. I wanted to make this quick video. I hope you learned something. If you are new here and you enjoy the video, you make it this far, please consider subscribing. It will help the channel grow. As for returning subscribers, thank you. I appreciate your patience and time and for still sticking around. And for everyone who's watched this video, please give us a thumbs up and comment. Um, if there's something that you'd like to see or didn't work for you, let me know. And take care. See you in the next video. Bye.